Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Daily Dizzle for Thursday, January 20th, 2011. I am Tommy Dizzle Mitz, as always. We got a lot to cover for you today. We got the worldwide box office from last week. We got some movie news, a lot of that to cover, actually. And in addition to that, we've got the North American box office from the last week. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. At the worldwide box office, business was down. Uh, last year, Avatar was continuing its uh, epic winning streak, uh, grossing over 128 million at number one for the whole week worldwide. Uh, in the top ten this week, couldn't even make that combined. Uh, Tangled held on to the number one spot. It ended up dipping 41 percent, which was a little bit of a decent dip, but it's been out in so many territories for so long that it was kind of expected at this point. Still made 15.6 million for the weekend and held off competition from the Green Hornet. That opened at 15.1 million from 35 territories. Did have a few first place and second place debuts, so it didn't do too terrible, and it's still got a lot of territories to open in. Uh, so hopefully that will be making money for uh, Sony in the long run. We actually do have coverage of that even later on. Uh, it ended up outperforming uh, the expectations for the weekend, so we will get to that when we get to the North American box office. Number three was Tron Legacy with 14.6 million. Over half of that, 8.1 million, came from just its debut in China. Uh, though on the flip side, that means the rest of its territory is decreased by about 63%, uh, which is kind of a rough hit. Though it's been out for a little while, and now uh, that the holidays and the beginning of January have kind of waned on and it's been out for two months, it will start dropping a little bit more. Though it has made a worldwide total of over 320 million. So uh, Disney's very happy about the success of that. Number four, Little Fockers had 14.2 million. Uh, if you want more comparisons of how bad it's doing compared to the last one, not necessarily bad, just not performing at the same epic levels that Meet the Fockers did, uh, it opened to $3 million in Italy, which was half of what Meet the Fockers opened to. So, Number five was The Tourist, uh, which made $13.9 million from almost 70 markets. Uh, it's almost at $200 million for its worldwide total. It, it made over $120 million just uh, at the overseas box office. So even though it didn't do so well here, it's still performing overall good. Number six was Gulliver's Travels, uh, having another good showing, had a strong opening in Brazil, uh, as well as some decent holdovers, made $11.6 million for the weekend, right now sits at just shy of $100 million at the overseas box office. Number seven was a local release out of Italy, which added over $10 million to its already impressive $40 million total, uh, if you don't count Avatar, which made $83 million uh, while it was released in Italy. It's Italy's highest grossing movie of the last eight years so far, so it can only get better from there. Yay, Italy. Number eight was The King's Speech, with $9.4 million from just four territories. Uh, that brings its total to over $30 million at, at the worldwide box office, plus the $30 million that it's got from America. It means it's already quadrupled its budget, so uh, that's making a lot of money at this point. Number nine was the Chronicles of Narnia, Voyage of the Dawn Treader. It dropped 48% to $9.2 million uh, in 65 territories, so it's in a lot of the marketplace at this point. Uh, right now, it is $20 million shy of eclipsing Prince Caspian's worldwide box office total, sitting at just shy of 260 million. Meanwhile, number 10, rounding out the worldwide box office, was Love and Other Drugs with 8.9 million. It's kind of had a subdued box office run, but it's still made almost 35 million at the worldwide box office. Uh, plus, it made the same amount at the American box office, which was its budget. So it's making some money, which is good in the long run. Uh, so that wraps up the worldwide box office. Now let's jump right into the latest movie news, because we've got a ton of that to cover. Let's try and get through this as quickly as we possibly can. It looks like Relativity Media has picked up the rights to The Raven. Uh, that's the John Cusack star movie with him as Edgar Allan Poe in the last couple of weeks leading up to his death where he's trying to hunt down a, a murderer. So it's uh, going for a seven meets Sherlock Holmes kind of approach, but it uh, definitely should be a good one. I'm glad to see a major studio has scored that. Uh, if anyone watches Star Wars, The Clone Wars, that cartoon show, I really don't. I don't care about Star Wars. I'll watch the original trilogy, I think the one that was out when I was a kid but the new ones I will avoid, like the plague. But still, uh, Liam Neeson is going to be reprising uh, his character from The Phantom Menace in one of the episodes, uh, January 28th, and again on February 11th as well. Uh, apparently there's going to be a three-part story arc, uh, so it, it's good that they're at least uh, bringing some of the original Star Wars people in uh, to the cartoon universe to try and give it some more credibility since they didn't retain like any of the voice talent. 
Now, with the office, originally Steve Carell, uh, it was reported that he was going to be around for the rest of the season. Now, apparently, he's going to be leaving a couple episodes uh, from the end, uh, around episode 14. And apparently, he's going to actually have a, a run-in with Ricky Gervais, who will be playing David Brent. If you don't know who that is, that is the original uh, manager on the office, like the UK version, like Ricky Gervais created it and starred in it and made it as awesome as it is and made it so America could whore it out in a remake. But still, I'm very excited about that because uh, you can talk, you can really pop in the original office anytime and because the British have shorter TV series, you know, if it's on for a season or two and they feel like they've done their story, they will not keep going ruin the credibility of it so it's one of those things you could pop it in and watch it from beginning to end and it's awesome uh skins on mtv i don't know if anyone heard about that show they had a new episode of jersey shore this past monday trying to promote it as a lead-in show ended up doing it hugely successful 3.3 million viewers however 1.2 million of them were under 18 which is uh the show's uh, rating is TVMA, which means no one below 18 should be watching it. And apparently at this point, uh, MTV executives are a little bit concerned that <laughs> the, con the series is actually going to be bringing them uh, federal child pornography uh, charges at some point. Just because there's uh, some young characters on the show, or at least you know playing young characters, you know it's like 17 year olds, and they're running around uh, naked and stuff. And uh, child pornography in the United States is defined as any visual depiction of a minor under 18 engaged in sexually explicit conduct. But you know, in the long run, that it, you can't really say that that's something that's sexual. Though there's a lot of other shit that goes on in the show that they definitely are uh, are going to be getting into some trouble if they're worried right now, because the stories haven't even heated up on the show. They haven't even touched the surface of what the UK version of the show did, and they actually cast actors who were between 15 and 19 who hadn't acted before. If you're going to do that, you should go with the old Hollywood thing of casting older, you know, mid 20s people to play high schoolers, not the youngins who you could get into trouble for doing that. Uh, other news, Robert Downey Jr. was originally lined up to play uh, Oz in Oz the Great and Powerful uh, over at Disney, which is being directed by Sam Raimi. Uh, apparently, uh, they are now in discussions with Johnny Depp to take the role because he has dropped out of it. However, if they do end up taking Johnny Depp on board Oz, uh, that means that they'll either have to push the Lone Ranger because he's also attached to that as the starring role of Tonto, or they will have to recast that. So we'll have more news on that. Now, Will Smith uh, produced the Karate Kid remake that his son was in. Apparently, now he's going to be doing the same for his daughter, uh, Willow, the one who did that Whip My Hair song. Uh, he's apparently going to be looking into doing a remake of Annie. And uh, rapper Jay-Z is in talks to collaborate on the music right now. I, I don't know if that's going to be good or not, but you know, at the very least, it'll be a different take, and that's what's good about Will Smith's remakes. Uh, he doesn't remake random stuff and do it exactly the same. He kind of gives a different touch to it, not necessarily make it necessary, but at least makes it different. Now recently at Warner Brothers, longtime studio executive Jessica Goodman ended up leaving, which has opened up a, a lot of uh, previously off-limits uh, franchises for reboots, uh, specifically one that's uh, kind of a big one is Lethal Weapon. Uh, apparently they're debating uh, whether or not they're going to seriously pursue a remake of that, which uh, you can probably uh, expect them to go through with it. Though really that one benefited more from the chemistry of the two lead actors than anything, uh, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. Even if you hate Mel Gibson nowadays, you can't deny he was hilarious in those. So uh, it'll really be about whoever gets casted in those roles, if they'll be successful or not. Uh, meanwhile at Marvel, uh, they've seen rough cuts of Thor and Captain America. Uh, the director from Captain America, Joe Johnston, says he watched it the other day. Uh, he likes it, you know, entertainment value, without out, fun to watch. Of course, they're going to say good things about it. Uh, meanwhile, Marvel's Brian Michael Bendis says he's seen Thor and it is fantastic. Um, so, obviously, they're starting the hype machine early on those. We'll see uh, if they're actually legit or if they're just trying to make sure that they make a little bit of money in their opening weekend. Uh, meanwhile, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, uh, unfortunately, is on track to be the least attended movie of the series at this point, if you look at uh, tickets sold. Uh, it will be not one of the lower grossing ones in raw dollars, but still, uh, you can't really expect anything more considering it was part one of the two-part movie and most people are just going to go to see the second one. Uh, without ruining too much, uh, one of the deaths from the second one is going to be changed uh, at an important location. Um, 
only hint I'll give is uh, Die Hard, dude. Anyone who has seen that and has seen Harry Potter and knows anything will know a little bit of what I mean without me having ruined anything. Because uh, if, any, if anyone read the book, you already know who dies anyway, so who cares? Just die hard, dude. And to wrap up today's movie news, uh, Ben Affleck is kind of on a hot streak now. Uh, after seeing his acting career kind of die down a little bit, he came back as a director doing Gone Baby Gone and getting much acclaim for that. The same happened with The Town, which he also starred in. Now he's looking at Eric Warren Singer's American Bullshit as his next directorial effort. Uh, the story is described as the true story of Abscam, the FBI's 1980 undercover sting operation of Congress to root out corruption, which is brainchild of the world's greatest con man. So it at least seems like interesting subject matter. Uh, he does very good with the whole uh, good and bad, uh, seeing both sides of the issues. That's why I loved Gone Baby Gone, one of the most intense, uh, heart-wrenching movies, but definitely a good one and worth checking out. So I will only look forward to that. I still haven't seen The Town, but I can't wait to see that as well because... I fucking love Ben Affleck. J-Lo was a bitch. She didn't deserve him. A what? Um... Now to wrap up today's Daily Dizzle, we'll touch uh, on the openers from this week and how they've been doing at the box office. The Green Hornet has been number one for the past few days. Uh, ended up making $43.7 million through its first six days at the box office. It did crack $40 million for the Martin Luther King weekend as well, which was uh, something people doubted it could do. So it's at least beating expectations slightly. Uh, meanwhile, the dilemma was holding in at number two for the week. Uh, ended up with $22.5 million for its first six days. Doing okay, but not great compared to the previous uh, movies that Vince Vaughn and Kevin James have done. Uh, we'll wait till tomorrow to cover the rest of the top ten of the box office from this past week. Mainly the rest of them are all the Oscar movies and uh, the family holdover movies. So we'll touch on those in full detail tomorrow so we can give uh, the weekly wrap-up at the box office. In addition to that, we will have a preview of the weekend box office as well. And the weekend NFL playoff championship games. Uh, we've got the Steelers and the Jets and the Bears taking on the Packers, so uh, it's going to be good games this weekend. The one great thing is that no matter what, the Super Bowl is going to be a well-played one with uh, two teams that people actually know in it. Uh, and we will also have, uh, speaking of the Super Bowl, we will start covering that a little bit because uh, the movie studios have actually released a list of uh, what movies they're going to be uh, showing previews for during the big game. Uh, the Super Bowl is a real uh, good time to start the snowball of promotion for any big blockbusters coming out for the year. Uh, so a lot of summer movies and some other ones as well you can see uh, not only during the game, but uh, the TV show that gets aired after the football game is over usually gets huge ratings. This year it's going to be Glee, so there's some studios advertising on that because that show is guaranteed ratings as well. You also have some of them debuting during the halftime show and the pregame. So we will have the full list of coverage of all that tomorrow, including whatever movie news might come out in the next day that we can't foresee because I don't have a crystal ball for the future. Sorry, I'm not that good. But as always, we do thank you guys for joining us here at The Daily Dizzle. If this is your first time checking us out, you can check out the previous seven weeks' worth of material at our YouTube channel. You can either click on the username DizzleMits or just go to YouTube.com slash DizzleMits. In addition to that, if you check the archives, you can see a lot of good uh, music video montages from some movies that are uh, near and dear to me, like High Fidelity, Beetlejuice, Freddy vs. Jason, The Dark Knight, Rocky bunch of other good ones so go ahead browse there you're bound to kill some time if you're looking for time to kill so once again we hope you've enjoyed spending your time with the daily dizzle i am tommy dizzle mitts we'll see you friday